Jones, I'm here with Dr. Boyd, guitar uh, extraordinaire, teacher here at Jones, a doctor of guitar, actually. He has mastered the guitar to the degree that he is a doctor of the instrument. How are you doing today? Great. And what have you been listening to lately, I guess, is something I'd like to know right now. Well, uh, lately, uh, sophomore recitals, uh, we have a lot of our students who are about ready to transfer. That's so, recital week. That's right. So we've had a lot of that going on, had a lot of great performances by the students. Is there, a lot of those are your kids, too. Uh, yeah, right. absolutely. Um, do you have any, uh, any maybe one or two students that, uh, that maybe shine? Especially bright. There's well, some kids you see with some just absolutely amazing potential. Right I like now. to think all of them do. If they have the dedication to come and you know take lessons and play, they're all getting something out of it. Uh, and the ones right now who are about to transfer, of course, they have uh, uh, prepared these recital programs, and it's a good you know opportunity for them to not only play in front of people, but to expose other people to a lot of the you know standard repertoire for the classical guitar. Now, what do you think the importance of uh, of the knowledge of, of classical technique and, cla and and music theory and and that and that particular approach to the instrument? How, what do you think the importance of that is? Well, to be able to apply it to any style of music, so you have the tools at your disposal at disposal, so you can play whatever you want to, you know, whatever the occasion calls for. And the technique is not limited to just classical music, but it can be applied to any spectrum of music. I, I, would, I wish it's something I'd stuck with because a lot of my favorite metal guys are, are classically trained or they, they play some absolutely amazing stuff. You have people like Ingve Malmsteen who, who does like an electric guitar rendition of Paganini's Caprice Number no. 5 and it's just insane. Sweet right. stuff. And, yeah. and Jeff Loomis of Nevermore and Chris Broderick who's now Megadeth's lead guitar player and he, he'll he do finger picking stuff on stage like just show some of his classical stuff and though he wasn't the first you know uh, the uh, uh, late Randy Rhodes, yes. you know, he applied a lot of that technique to uh, his style of music and did a lot of finger style did his own composition and that played even the Brower studies and things like that Absolutely. I, I think I think classical when applied to the to the pop and rock music world I think is, is fantastic. It hopes opens up a, a yep. whole other depth. Now I don't wanna interview Dr. Boyd the teacher anymore and I wanna interview Dr. Boyd the player. <laughs> and I wanna ask you like about some of uh, some of like your your projects or bands when you were in college, like what you were involved with musically when you were well, it's gotten so hard to separate, you know, uh, what I do from my you know, teaching now. But if I have to think back, I mean, some of my biggest influences when I was uh, forming bands in high school and my early college years were obviously a lot of the uh, progressive rock and alternative bands, you know, from uh, even from the Beatles to you know uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer to uh, the Cure and you know, bands such as that. And, and even these days, I still have a great deal of respect for a lot of the modern artists who do make an effort to, you know, uh, especially fuse you know, different styles together and you know, uh, push the boundaries of you know, pop music. I mean, Sugar Ross is one of you know, uh, the bands I greatly admire, still listen to uh, a lot when I'm listening to pop music. When you say uh, progressive rock at the time, are you talking about like, I don't know, like like maybe King Crimson or Adrian Ballou, any of this stuff. That to, yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely, f they fall into that. But yeah. also, you know, the like, classic like Pete Rush, Floyd and Rush, 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 absolutely. Yeah, right, yes, good, of course. Good. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, good. Now, um, any uh, any like moments, like like a uh, performance moments, like uh, extra, like especially maybe maybe funny or embarrassing or. Or just very, you know, more so noteworthy performance moments of, of any point in your career, like of tea, like you know, recital or, or college band or otherwise that you can well, think of. I, I you, you know, want to share. well, uh, anytime I get to play for people is a treat for me. Uh, I like to think that I, you know, what I do uh, can be appreciated on some level by anybody who enjoys music, even though much of what I do now is you know, devoted to classical and art music, especially out of Spanish guitar, yeah. and things that have uh, you know, uh, 
a great appeal to me lately have been, you know, world music, you know, influences and uh, composers such as uh, Lou Harrison, and some crossover classical guitar quartets like the Los Angeles Guitar Quartet, things like that. So uh, anytime I can, you know, kind of open up, you know, uh, you know, what I do to other people and expose them to something that may be different, interesting, it's always a treat. But noteworthy, I mean, I have to put, you know, my Carnegie Hall performance uh, up there. That I, I still think of that fondly. Yes, and that was just an unbelievable, you know. It's not something a lot of people get to say in their life. Right, and uh, I mean, if it, if it never happens again, you know, I know that I've been there once and it's something I'll be able to cherish my whole life. It's like, as far as being a musician goes, that's like the equivalent of getting to play at the Super Bowl. <laughs> that's yeah. about right. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I can't take my eyes off this instrument you have here. I keep <laughs> looking at it. I keep looking down at it. Tell me about it, please. Well, this one was made for me by Kenny Hill, uh, a handmade instrument, and he's uh, he's working with a, a lot of modern techniques. Uh, you can get into all these complicated things about you know the double top split wood using some composite materials. Uh, you know, things about the fingerboard and the way that it's elevated to allow better access to make it more playable and more than anything just create more volume with an acoustic instrument and you know, the wood itself here is uh, uh, maple which of course is common for violins, yeah. you know, and instruments such as that but not so common for an acoustic instrument so he experimented with that type of wood to give more clarity, more richness with the cedar top and uh, just it, it's a fabulous instrument that I feel very fortunate to have uh, worked with him on. And uh, what what exactly is accomplished by the ports up here? Well, uh, mo most of the time when you're playing an acoustic instrument, the sound tends to be projected straight out. And as a classical guitarist, we often sit at a kind of funny angle to allow uh, the guitar to open up to the room, and this just allows it to open up a little bit more. So rather than sitting straight to the audience and projecting to the people right in front of you, you can sit a little bit more and open it up to the side so people can have the full impact of the sound of the instrument. Because as a lot of people might be unfamiliar with classical guitar players, they set it on the inside knee. Right. As opposed to, you know, the people who, you know, the, the pickers and grinners who just you know, sit here on the outside. Well, you know, yeah, uh, which is which is fine too. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, a lot of uh, flamenco guitars they've studied classical techniques, but they will sit with the guitar over there as well. So, this is just kind of the standard position to have it elevated up off the other leg, which again, like I said, is an unusual sitting position, but it's to facilitate you know better access and playability to the instrument. Exactly. Now, um, you're going to play something for us today, are you not? Right. I'm going to play uh, a Spanish uh, piece by composer Francisco Tariga. And he is very influential uh, with the late romantic style of guitar playing. Uh, this particular piece is a, a tango. And it, uh, it's just a nice, you know, charming little piece with some common, you know, guitar techniques and special effects on it. All right. Well, let's hear it.
Thank you. And for everyone else who was impressed with that performance, he is on iTunes. Yes. I do have <laughs> my recordings on iTunes, and anybody who's interested in studying classical guitar or learning more about the guitar in general can feel free to contact me here at Jones. Please do. If you wish to, to get there, he's the first person to talk to about it. All right. It was an absolute pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you.